Welcome to the NLPCourses.com show, where we push past the hype and pull back the velvet curtains of creating a successful life with NLP. Diving into physiology, neuroscience, and linguistics so that NLP becomes a practical tool at home and in your career, moving beyond the technique so that you can make a name, make money, or make a difference. Tune in weekly if you care more than others think wise as we set out on our quest to uncover the secrets of successful people from all walks of life. Make sure you head over to nlpcourses.com to subscribe to receive our newsletter and receive free transcripts of each show. Here's your host, NLP Master Trainer, John Cassidy Rice. Hello and welcome to podcast number seven. My name is John Cassie Rice and I have the pleasure to be your host. Wow, seven already. How time flies. What have you been up to? What have you been doing? I have been wearing my suit quite a lot this week. I'm doing a lot of corporate stuff. It is great fun, but every now and again, you know, you need to find time to play. So off I toodled down to the park early in the morning and have a play on those slides. You know, we all need to let our inner child go every now and again. Right, so what are we going to start to explore within this podcast show? Well, we've been looking at the unconscious mind in the last few podcasts, so I thought this time we'd take a different angle. Now, whenever we think we create electrical activity, and you can measure that electrical activity, and it's called beta, alpha, theta, and delta. Now, you've come across this theory before, I'm sure you have. So I've been digging around to see if I can come up with some different angles, a way of understanding the different brainwave states. Now, when we read about them and when we talk about them, we do talk about them separately, as though they are independent of each other. Yet, they do not work like that. So if you've got some high alpha activity within your brain, you'd also have some low level of beta and some theta. Now, why is this important to bring up at this point? Because if you look at any studies into flow states, being in the zone, there seems to be a combination of this, being relaxed and open, which is all to do with alpha states, but also being highly focused. And that's to do with beta brainwave states. So they seem to work together. So in a highly focused state, some of the things that seem to be going on is, is high electrical activity beta and also alpha, which is a slower brainwave state. And I want you to just to keep that in mind, although we are going to talk about these separately. And each of the different brainwave states have benefits and downsides. So we're going to start off with beta activity, which is 14 to 35 cycles per second. Now, this is when you're awake, when you're concentrating, when you're focused. Now, I'm outwardly engaged at the moment, so if we were to measure my brain waves, we'd blow, probably measure low-level activities of beta. Now, if we were to measure your brainwave states, depending on what you're doing, of course, as you're listening to this, you're taking information in. You're normally in an alpha brainwave state. Now, within beta, what we find is that Habitual beliefs are formed and acted upon. This is great state for rote memory. So if you've got to sit down and memorize a list or procedures, beta activity is the best place to be because this is when you're focused. It's really good at getting everything organized. When you're doing any written language, not creative writing, but written text where you need to give instructions, those types of things. So i.e. concentration. Okay, so we kind of know that. So let's go to extremes to explore the benefits and downside of this particular brainwave state, beta. So what happens if you have too much beta activity for a sustained period of time? So we're not talking, say, 40 minutes. We're talking maybe a couple of days. Well... A black and white thinking starts to take in. You don't see any subtleties of what's going on around you. It's either right or wrong. Now, then you start to become concerned about what others think. You become concerned about yourself. Basically, a perfectionism starts to kick in. You want everything to be perfect. That's yourself and other people. 
and which means you start to become really critical of self and others. Now, because there's a high electrical activity going on, insomnia normally occurs. You know those nights when you can't sleep and your brain's racing really, really fast. That's a lot of beta activity. Now, if you know somebody who struggles to sleep, let me pass along this bit of advice that I got from a neurosurgeon. Now, this is not medical advice. You have to seek medical advice. I'm just passing along a bit of information. Every cell in the body pulls in calcium and pushes out calcium. That's a very simplified version of that, but that's essentially what's going on. And what can sometimes happen is the calcium starts to build up a little bit and that can irritate the cell, which creases, increases electrical activity. Now, there is something that will naturally calm all of that down. It's called magnesium. Now, magnesium is a trace mineral. We don't need a lot of it, but if you lack it, you'll have trouble relaxing and have trouble sleeping. Now, to see whether you have any magnesium deficiency, a very simple test. You can go to one of these health stores and buy a magnesium spray. And if you spray it on your forehead and it stings, that's normally a sign that you're magnesium deficient. It takes about 48 hours to 36 hours for the magnesium to build up. And you don't need a lot of it, but the magnesium spray will quickly stop stinging and it will start to normalize. You can also buy magnesium flakes and have a 20 minute magnesium bath before you go to bed. You'll probably have the best night's sleep you'll ever have. And the other place I, I came across this was in sports injuries. So if you have an injury and you spray magnesium on the area, yes, it will sting, it will sting. But it also starts to bring the inflammation down very quickly. So like I said, I'm not a doctor, but that's some information that I picked up. So a lot of electrical activity creates this insomnia, which means you're tired and then you get this perfectionism and you can't do well and everything starts to become a spiraling circle. You also, you feel like life is just rushing you past and you're missing out. So what happens if we have too little beta activity. Well, now we have a poor memory. We have lack of motivation. A dullness starts to kick in. And disorganized. We said this is all about organization. Well, if you're having trouble generating beta activity, there's a disorganization of thoughts, which is a good way of saying that. And you start to become into unintentionally irresponsible to other people and it's not that you don't care or want to help you're just having trouble focusing now i did come across a study somewhere where it said that there were some underperforming children in schools and what they did they trained them to generate beta activity it was only took about five ten minutes a day just little activities to increase the brainwave speed and what they noticed after about three weeks i understand that the children could concentrate and focus, and in so doing, their behaviour improved, their scores start to improve. So this beta activity is important, being able to focus and concentrate. But too much of it is detrimental, and too little of it is detrimental. Notice, we tend to live in society that wants people to focus all the time, and you can't do it, it's detrimental to your health which leads us quite neatly into alpha brainwaves. Sponsor of this week's NLPcourses.com podcast show is the NLP Train the Trainer Only for the Ambitions who wish to make a living teaching NLP. Apply for your place in this world-class training by heading over to the NLPcourses.com. Now this is between 8 to 13 cycles per second. This is when you're daydreaming, when your mind is just wandering. Yes, I know, when you're listening to this podcast, your mind is wandering. I kind of count on it. This is, if you've ever done any accelerated learning, it's all to do with alpha activity. And there's certain music that really puts your brain into this alpha activity that helps you absorb information very quickly. Now, certain classical music sorry, classical music has been shown to be the best, but it's not all classical music. 
Baroque music seems to work really well. But it's not all Baroque music. It's the Largo sections within Baroque music. And that's normally at 60 beats per minute, and which is your rest in heart rate. And the music goes... da 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 dee 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 da 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 dee dee da And it slows down your heart rate as you start to in tune with the music. Your breathing slows down and your brainwave slows down, which enables you to absorb information very quickly. And this is about solving problems, coming up with new ideas. Now, Edison, who solved one or two problems in his life, noticed this. And he especially noticed it when he was out in nature. And he used to go and sit at the end of the pier with a fishing rod. Because any time you're near water, especially, their water seems to trigger this alpha activity. This is also why when you buy those relaxation CDs, they've always got a recording of somebody running their bath. Well, they claim it's the, a trickling brook, but it's normally the recording of their bath running. All right, back to Edison. Edison noticed that when he was out sitting by the sea, especially, he would come up with new ideas, new insights. And he said, if I sat at the end of the pier just by myself, people would come up and talk to me. And I didn't really want that to happen. I wanted this free flowing of ideas. So if I sat there with a fishing rod, apparently he didn't have a hook on the fishing rod because he didn't want to catch a fish because that would interrupt his thinking. But he had a fishing rod, people left him alone. So creativity is done at Alpha. And this is why you've heard that brainstorming, innovation, new ideas is best done in this playful state. Because a playful state seems to trigger Alpha activity. Spatial awareness also becomes heightened in this particular brainwave state. Um, So somebody like an architect who is designing a building can spatially sort information. And this is done best in this relaxed state, Alpha state. It's also where... For the first time, you become empathetic to somebody else. You can understand their viewpoint. You tend not to do that in beta activity, but alpha is the first state where you really start to understand somebody else's map of the world. Okay, so what happens if there is too much alpha activity for a sustained period of time? Well, you have a wonderful, rich inner world. It is wonderful inside your head. And you're having ideas for businesses that would easily make you a millionaire in two to five years. And do you? No, because why would you like to take those ideas from this wonderful place between your ears to the outside world? Oh, that is way too much effort. So you miss out on opportunities, not because you're not having the ideas, You are having the ideas. It's just that you're not acting upon them. So it's very easy to become detached from society and time to disappear. Basically, it's undisciplined routines. You become oblivious to other people's lives. And again, it's not because you don't care about them. It's just it's so wonderful inside your own head you're finding it hard to concentrate on anything around you. So time disappears. So what happens if there's an underactivity of alpha? Well, now you're having struggling to come up with new ideas, new solutions, and you can't solve problems. You're also looking for an external input Something that's interesting, anything that's interesting, that could be other people, television, it could be drugs, anything just to create some stimulation for this lack of internal world or a void, if you like. Next, we move into theta. Theta is the love brainwave. Now, when you feel those real deep emotions for other people, this is a theta activity. You know... Parents holding newborn children. We measure their brain with huge amounts of theta. People who are in love, huge amounts of theta. So those deep emotions. You know that point when you're falling off to sleep? You're not asleep, but you're not awake. That's theta. And you have that idea. And it's such a good idea. It is the type of idea that solves world hunger 
in two to three years and you think to yourself as you're drifting off to sleep, it is such a good idea. I do not need to write that down. And do you remember it in the morning? No, it's disappeared. Now Edison, again, noticed that during the evening in his armchair as he sat by the fire and he was drifting off to sleep, would have those insights. And he wanted to have more of those. So apparently what he did was he got hold of a ball bearing and he would hold it in his one hand and as he was drifting off to sleep, he would drop the ball bearing, which would wake him up and then he'd be do that again. And he'd just do that until he could train himself to stay conscious at theta. Now I thought to myself, that's quite a strange thing to do. Then it occurred to me, do people who instinctively make a difference in the world seem to know at some level that at different brainwave states you get different responses. So I went on that hunt. So here's the thing. In the arts, music, it's easy to find examples. So let's go very straight laced. Let's go for scientists. Now again, I could make this easy on myself and go for Albert Einstein, we all know about his wonderful thought experiments, which would have been done in alpha and theta activity. Let's go somewhere else. Have you heard of Richard Feynman? Ah, Richard Feynman is a wonderfully interesting guy. He was up there with Albert Einstein. And the difference between the two, Albert Einstein, we kind of put on a pedestal. We worship you, Albert. We're not worthy. Whereas Richard Feynman is known as the everyday physicist. He's also known as the bongo-playing physicist. Now, here's the thing. You cannot find a picture of Richard Feynman where he doesn't have the biggest smile on his face. He really loved life. He played at life. And he had this incredible left brain. He could do the physics, mathematics, just like that. He also had an incredible right brain. Like I said, he played the bongos. And I've heard recordings of this top Physicist making songs up about orange juice on his bongos. And he's going, I want some orange juice as he played the bongos. Now, whenever you heard him talk and you can get his lectures on audio and they're worth listening to. And you listen to him and you go, man, this sounds fascinating. No idea what he's going on about, but man, it found, sounds fascinating. And I was reading the introduction to one of his books where he said, do you know, People come to a physics lecture expecting not to understand it. And he said, that is because none of my students understand it. That is because I don't understand it. And that's because nobody truly understands it. Which also puts into context what Neil Bohr said about string theory, where he said, no, no, sorry, quantum theory, where Neil Bohr says about quantum theory, If you think you understand it, you are hopelessly lost. It is weirder than we could ever predict. Now, I was reading about Richard Feynman's life. And halfway through the book, he said that he trained himself to stay conscious while he was asleep. So he could wake up within his dreams and control his dreams. Well, this is just wacky stuff. But you'll be amazed time and time again. That people who seem to make a difference, a real significant difference in the world, instinctively know that at different levels of thinking you get different results. Wow. This is getting fascinating. Now also, theta is about insights. So we to measure your insights from this podcast today and then measured your insights tomorrow. Now, keep in mind that insights are deeper than just knowing facts. It's about how you imply, imply something. And because you slept on it, your insights tomorrow will be deeper than they are today. And if anyone's ever said to you, oh, I need to sleep on this, what they've just instinctively said is, I need this information to pass through theta before I'm comfortable with it. Now that has implications for us because if we want somebody to make a decision on some brand new information that we've not, they've not heard before 
and you force them to make a decision there and then, they're quite likely just to say no. If you say to them, sleep on it and I'll get back to you, 24 hours is good, 48 hours is better. And if it's right for them, I'm not guaranteed they'll say yes, but if it's right for them, they're more likely to say yes. So theta is also about advanced meditation. Most people who meditate normally get down to alpha and as they go into theta will start to fall asleep. You can always tell if you're about to move into theta for, for whatever reason, any images you have while you're meditating initially go black and white before they turn back into colour. So it all seems to be connected with profound spiritual experiences. And this was first measured in the 1970s with the Indian yogis coming over and measuring their brain waves. Right, so what happens if there's too much theta? Well, the uncontrollable need to sleep. It's a very slow brain waves. Also, seems to be connected to petty mill seizures. Now, petty mill seizures, or any seizure in that fact, is a complex situation. So it's a contributing factor. Now, my son, I've got a son that's disabled. He's, uh, he's a wonderful lad. And we suspected he was having petty mill seizures, but it's really hard to track because that petty mill just means small and seizure is like your nervous system freezing. You know, like on your computer where you get that spinning icon and then it comes back online. Well, that was basically happening to his nervous system. Like I said, it's really hard to track because you don't know something just caught his eye. He's thinking about something or he has left the planet. Now, quick aside. Now, he it developed into uncontrollable epilepsy. He's on a whole range of drugs. But one of the things that he's had done was he's had a magnet connected underneath his skin with a wire going up to his vagus nerve. And every, I think at the moment, 0.2 seconds, he's getting a slight electrical activity into his brain to disrupt these epileptic fits, if you like. And if he starts to move into one, we've got a very strong magnet that we scan the battery with that's under his skin, which sends electrical charge up into his brain, which helps reduce the epileptic fit. The surgeon essentially said to us, now, we know it works in various different ways. We don't really know why it works. We have some theories, obviously. He says some of the side effects seem to be an improved feeling of goodwill and better energy states. So I was thinking of having one installed myself. Hey, right, so what happens if there's too little theta activity? Well, we said this was the love brainwave. What if there's too little theta, that inability to feel those deep emotions, to feel connected to other people, those, those wonderful experiences like love and for, you know that trust of other people. So when you don't feel that, you start to mistrust other people. Now, that can lead itself to you feeling either superior or inferior to other people. And that is all connected with either wanting to control that relationship or, in fact, being controlled by that relationship. Wow. Next, we move into delta. Delta is when you're sleeping. Your brain is repairing itself. Now, when you're dreaming, you have theta activity firing at the same time. So we're talking sleeping. And this is how important sleep is. We were willing, as cave people, to curl up in a corner of a cave and go to sleep, knowing that a saber-toothed tiger could come in and say, Ah, a peritif. Well, it's a French saber-toothed tiger. We're willing to put ourselves at risk to be able to sleep. So sleeping is really important to us. It's where the body and the brain is repairing itself and sorting out what happened during the day to us. So I hope you found this useful. We've been exploring beta, alpha, theta and delta. And we've looked at some of the extremes, knowing that each one of them are important but too much of one or too little of one of these brainwave states is detrimental to us. So I have a gift for you. If you would like the gift, what I invite you to do 
is to leave me a review, a five-star review on the iTunes. It really helps us. It helps us get into the news and noteworthy. And in exchange for a genuine five-star review, what I'd like to do is send you an audio where we have a way to take you down into theta using this piece of audio, very powerful. So post your review, email me it, and I'll send you a link to that audio. Thank you for listening, and I'm looking forward. I know this has been a little bit longer than some of the others, but it was a big topic, and I'm looking forward to catching up with next week. All the best then. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. You were just listening to NLPCourses.com podcast show. If you enjoyed the show, please leave a review and make sure to head over to NLPCourses.com to subscribe to our newsletter where we keep you updated with in-depth NLP topics. Subscribe and stay tuned for upcoming episodes on neuro linguistics, programming, and beyond.